seen. Back home now, and a book about generational trauma and the power of country, culture and belonging has won this year's prestigious Miles Franklin Literary Award for Indigenous novelist Melissa Lukashenko. Her novel is called Too Much Lip. It was chosen from a short list featuring a mix of emerging and established writers, including past winner Rodney Hall. It is our most elevated and important literary prize in the country, and we're delighted to say that Melissa Lukashenko joins us now from Sydney. Melissa, good morning. Congratulations. Thanks, Virginia. How was last night? Uh, pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> what'd, you get, what'd you get up to? Um, I spent some time with my family. I don't oh. often get to see my son who lives in Sydney. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, well done. You've mm. said of this win that um, it's kind of terrifying, you say, but you've also said this, I only recently realised that I could be doing so much more in my writing and now this goes and happens. What did you mean by that? What was the so much more that you realised you could be doing with your writing? I guess when you write a novel, uh, you know, I wanted to write a novel about class, about what it means to be poor in contemporary Australia Yeah. A and to write a funny book about um, a funny book that took trauma seriously uh, so I guess what I meant when I said I could be doing so much more is um, yeah I, I want to go deeper I want to go further uh, but you've got to have ambitions for every new book and so with my next book I'll uh, I'll be trying to develop my voice develop that characterization and continue to talk about the humanity of um, yeah. you know my characters well, want, the, the, yeah. that, that's what I take from what you're saying, that, um, that, that you do have a voice as a writer, that you could be going deeper, you, you thought, but also that there were, there were issues that you could go to and that you could be a voice for. Uh, yes and no. I'm an artist primarily. Um, you know, I'm a political person, but uh, I'm about the art and the craft of storytelling, mm. which is one of the most powerful uh, human processes that exists. You know, my people had over 100,000 years in this country to learn yes. how to be human and we know about the power of story. So yeah, I do want to look at issues, but I really want to talk about what the Wiradjuri called Yindyamara, you know, the ability to live respectfully in a world that's worth living in and try and get, um, you know, try and nudge Australia back towards that civilization that was lost when the savages arrived. <laughs> The story of Kerry Salter is uh, your book, The Granddaughter Coming Back Home to Her Dying Pop After a, a Long Time Away and to a Very Volatile Family Situation. Mm. Is there a personal origin and experience to this story? Uh, there is, although I didn't actually realise um, to what extent until I was 40,000 words into the book. I, I began thinking of this book after I interviewed Alice Walker in Sydney in 2015. Right. Uh, and I also wrote it in the aftermath of my mum's passing away. And of course, when people pass, family secrets are sometimes revealed. And at 40,000 words in, I realised I was uh, I was writing a mix of fiction and uh, family biography. That must have been a pretty powerful moment when you realised that. Yeah, I had to sit down and, and think pretty hard about uh, the story I was telling and exactly why I was telling it. But it's the job of the artist to look around and, and say what's happening and, and reflect that in our work, I think. Uh, someone once said that there's nothing more revolutionary than actually saying what's going on. Yes, <laughs> that's a great line. You're a Guri woman of Bunjalung and European heritage and this might be many readers' first introduction to Indigenous vernacular and what mm. the chair of the, of the judging panel um, of your prize called Deadly Black Humour. Tell us about that language and that vernacular that you, that you use right from the get-go in the book. Yeah, it's the language of the black underclass. Um, it's also a language that would be familiar to some in the in the white underclass as well, mm. because the book. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to say uh, we don't take inequality seriously. You know, it's a book about the guts and the ferocity of people with nothing much to lose, and I've come across and and am related to a lot of people like that, a lot of men and women and youth. Uh, black and white, uh, are all part of the Sisters Inside community. And uh, I'll be talking about this at the Opera House uh, at the end of the month when I'm talking at the uh, Antidote Festival about justice. You know, the, the opposite of poverty is not wealth. The opposite of poverty is justice. And this is a book about people who have to make their, literally have to make their own justice in country mm. New South Wales.
Well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, that's a, a, an issue so much of, of today and of Australia's potential future. I'm interested to hear you say that you're a political person but mm. not a political writer. And I, I totally get that the art and the craft is something and has to be something separate to whatever the personal political mission might be. But when those threads merge, that's potentially very powerful, isn't it? Oh, we can only hope, eh? I am a political writer. I, I didn't exactly say that, but uh, my... You know, my reason for being here is to tell stories and to convey uh, what I see around me in Australia and in my community through storytelling. So, you know, if if things change as a result of my book, great. Um, I also want to move people. I want yeah. to do what Uncle Kev Carmody has done in his body of work and, and speak these Aboriginal truths that come from a very long history of oral storytelling. You know, we had the first literature in the world for many, many millennia before the British rocked up. And the fact that they were and are spoken doesn't mean that they're not literature and doesn't mean that they don't have a great civilising mission to play in modern Australia. Which I know is the way that you describe your mission as well. Melissa, congratulations um, on a fantastic achievement and uh, keep writing well. Boogle one. Thank you. Now, Independent MP Andrew Wilkie...